Mexico. Hello, my dear students. And if you don't mind, I'll remove my mask. I have been vaccinated. Besides the fact that I had COVID last November, so I think uh, it's safe. Uh, it's gonna be safe to return to school and especially if you've been immunized, which 16 and up can be immunized now with no wait and no appointment and no fee. So I encourage everyone to get immunized, um, especially since I'm mainly talking to my virtual students who have appropriately, and I'm on your side totally, decided to stay away from school to avoid not just catching COVID, but bringing COVID home to others and to loved ones in their circle of friends and family. But I want to finish our quick discussion of elephant toothpaste. If you go to your course stream and then at the top, go to classwork and scroll down, you'll see the elephant toothpaste lab. And I want to remind you, if you just do your lab and put down the answers I'm going to tell you here in the discussion, it's basically a free hundred. And not only that, don't forget the labs count the same as the test. There is a test this Wednesday over reactions. And this is a classic chemical reaction. This is a degradation, decomposition, breakdown reaction. We call it a decomposition reaction in our um, jargon and terminology, where hydrogen peroxide breaks down to water and oxygen. And we can speed that process up with a substance called a catalyst, which is a substance that speeds up the rate of the reaction and is not consumed in the reaction. Now, in biology and other classes, you're gonna learn you know, that enzymes are, are living catalysts and the catalysts in living systems. They don't make a reaction go that wouldn't go normally except that they speed significantly speed up the rate of the reaction. All of this, including our breakdown and our um, our discussion is in this uh, preamble to our lab. So I want to go over these questions quickly and like many labs and most of my labs, I always have a question or two about safety because, you know, I won't say I don't care whether or not you learn chemistry, but the one thing I care about the most is surprisingly not that you learn chemistry, but it's your safety. So the first question is, what are two potential safety hazards that can be encountered in this lab exercise? If you scroll up, you'll notice we're using not your regular, your mother's hydrogen peroxide, store-bought hydrogen peroxide. We're using 30% hydrogen peroxide, which is highly reactive, even explosive, cannot be heated, cannot be mixed with certain chemicals, can burn you. Um, it's kind of cool when you get a little drop on you. Not that cool. Besides burning and stinging, instead of being red or black like a regular burn, it's actually white because it's a strong oxidizing agent and acts as a bleach. Of course, you know, people bleach their hair with peroxide. Um, that being said, hydrogen peroxide, I'll give you three or four, is a very toxic chemical. The reaction proceeds very quickly. A great deal of heat is produced and of course, heat and thermal energy can burn and when you're doing rapid expansion in glass vessels, there's always a danger that something will burst and broken glass can cut. You can go online and you can see a lot of jackasses doing this experiment to see how much they can do and how high they can make it go and how um, much they can use up at one time. And when they do that, they try to increase the pressure and send this out through a narrow neck. And when they do that, they're asking for pressure to build up inside a vessel that is frequently made of glass. There's one famous video by a fellow who's a former NASA engineer, and he's setting the Guinness Book of Records for the largest elephant toothpaste experiment and he's having a cancer survivor, a kid, do it so he can be the record holder. 
It's a very uh, gregarious and human thing for him to do, to do this for this kid's, this cancer survivor's birthday. But he designs this giant room size Erlenmeyer flask strapped with iron filled with 50 gallon drums of this hydrogen peroxide and these chemicals. And you know, in the end, it still blew up. It blew the bottom out. He didn't strap the bottom of it. It built up so much pressure, it blew the bottom out. It still reacted and whatever, filled a swimming pool or something. But anyway, so those three main things, toxic, caustic, hazardous chemicals, high concentration hydrogen peroxide, very reactive. Uh, heat is generated, which can burn. And of course, anytime you're working with glass and glassware, the risk, especially on these stone tops, every time you bump it, you know, every time I bump something, I break it. Uh, you're always dealing with broken glass. And again, in the lab, if you break something, don't worry. You paid a lab fee. No, that's for the college students. But uh, the taxpayers paid for it. Don't worry about it. Don't grab for it. Don't reach it. Don't try and clean it up. Don't pick up broken glass. I'll come along with the right tools to sweep up broken glass, neutralize any chemicals, and I've got plenty more glassware, plenty more beakers, plenty more Erlenmeyer flasks. The main thing to do is no horseplay in the lab and keep, you know, a cool head and will handle any problem as it arises. So it says, what are two appropriate safety precautions? Of course, when handling chemicals, you want to um, wear safety glasses. You saw me wearing safety glasses and working behind a safety shield, wearing appropriate uh, safety gear. I probably should have been wearing gloves, but I was wearing a lab coat. Uh, I was keeping my amounts of the chemicals small so that we demonstrated the principles, but we uh, didn't overdo it with a very vigorous reaction. Also, uh, I kept my distance and we um, waited until everything had cooled down to begin the cleanup so that we were not burned by hot glassware or hot believe it or not, incredibly hot soap suds. So um, those are the appropriate cautions. Always eyewear is number one, wear appropriate safety gear and follow all safety protocols. So why was steam coming off the foam? Well, it's because it's a very exothermic reaction. Hydrogen peroxide would rather be oxygen and water. And the energy in those bonds is released as we break those bonds and reform the new um, chemical compounds or chemical molecules. And so we actually heated the water above boiling. We generated so much heat, we generated steam. And don't forget, you know, water doesn't boil until 100 degrees, but steam can be hotter than 100 degrees and can carry a great deal of thermal energy and can burn worse than fire. Um, I'm going to scroll down here a little bit to some of our other questions. I'm having trouble with my smart board today, so we will just do it. It says write a word equation for this reaction, and I'm going to work over here on the board and just write the fact that hydrogen peroxide reacts to form water and oxygen. Water vapor, water gas, if you will. This is write a balanced equation for this reaction. So we start with a skeleton equation. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, one hydrogen per oxygen. And we're gonna break down to water plus oxygen. If you want to add state functions, these are gases and this is a liquid, that's an L. Now, what I need are my coefficients for each of these. And if you look, I've got two oxygens here and one oxygen here, that's three. 
that's an odd number, and I have an even number over here, two. So my first inclination is to put a two here and a two here, and that would give me two oxygens here, two oxygens here for a total of four, and I have two times two, four on this side. I need the same number of atoms on each side when I balance these equations. And then I've got two times two hydrogens or four hydrogens here and four hydrogens here. So everything is balanced. The coefficient one here is understood. You can put it or not. Okay. There's your balanced chemical reaction. It says what type of chemical reaction is this? Remember, we have five types of reactions. We've got single replacement, double replacement, or double displacement. We've got decomposition reactions, addition reactions, and we've got combustion reactions, where something, usually organic with carbon containing, produces carbon dioxide and water. But in this case, this is one substance breaking down into two, so this is a decomposition reaction. So the answer to six is decomposition reaction. Are there any more answers I can give you to get you 100? Because remember, if you just turn this in, you get 100. But if you don't turn it in, you get a zero. Okay? And this counts the same as a test. So you want to take advantage of this. So what role does the I minus ion from the sodium iodide play in the reaction? Well, it plays the role of a catalyst. And a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of the reaction and is not consumed in the reaction. And if you want, sometimes we write the catalyst over the arrow, our equivalent of the equal sign in our equation. So there's your discussion questions, there's your answers. Fill out your lab report, hand it in, and I'll get them graded and we'll be keeping up. Uh, I hope you're keeping up, uh, but I'll get them graded and I'll do my best to keep up with the grades and your grading. And we have another reaction that I want to discuss and describe with you. I will post that discussion tomorrow. I'm posting the lab demo today. Um, but we will talk about the uh, conversion of sodium metal to sodium ions. It's a very explosive reaction. We have a demonstration video for that reaction. It's technically a replacement reaction. We're going to replace the hydrogen in HOH or H2O water with sodium to form sodium. OH and AOH. So until you see that next lab posted along with the videos and the discussion, including more answers and another easy grade, uh, stay safe and take care. Goodbye now.